right. Hello, folks. How are we doing? Welcome to Boost Live. My name is John Nelson, the plugin CEO of JKL Works and the plugin business.net and .com. Uh, we're getting all that together. There's lots and lots of things going. There may be, uh, may be some new things to show here very, very soon. So I, uh, I hope you'll uh, get into it. So thank you for checking this all out. I want to take a little bit of a step back from what we've sort of been doing the last uh, couple of weeks. But there is a, and, and it is a bit self-serving, so I'll just warn you in advance. But I, I hope you, I, I want to share with you the roadmap of where this is going and why we're doing this and sort of what the differences are and and why this is different than a lot of content that you're finding out there on the interweb. So I hope if you have a business, if you have a nonprofit organization even, um, that that it serves you well, that it, we really look into this and you kind of see where this is going. And you see, I mean, I, I hope you're here for every one of these uh, get togethers that we do. But in the case that you're not, if you happen to miss one, uh, that you find the topics that are the most useful for you, because I want this to really be a resource. So I wanted to talk about five major impact areas, and we're actually going to dive a whole lot deeper than that into this, you know, but I wanted to talk about those particular areas and uh, see how they can really help your business. And, and let's let's hope we'll, we'll talk about uh, some things in detail here just a little bit. It's not going to be very long uh, for this particular time, but I at least wanted to give you the option of seeing where we're going. And uh, we're going to tell some new stories some things you haven't heard along the way. And I hope it's just going to be an amazing experience for you. And that you leave not only, you know, finding some real value out of these, you know, these resources, but. Maybe at some point you'll decide that you're ready to look at your business in a whole new different light. And you have the ability to do that. You have the ability to say yes and no and to really look at some things you might not have looked at in your business before. Uh, but they can make some some true wholesale differences. Just little changes, not nothing major, just, just little things that you really haven't looked at because you've been so focused on sales or on software development or website development or, or your you know particular craft or what you do. So so I, I hope that you find some real value in these and there's there's much deeper places we can go to with them. And along the way, if you find a topic and see a topic that we're not covering that you have more questions about. Uh, you be you should drop a line uh, to the either in the comments of below where you're watching this video, or in uh, by sending an email to uh, to info at jkoworks.com. So, and and just let us know you saw this on the live stream and there's something else you have questions about. Uh, so there'll be some other ways and means to do that. So let's uh, let's let's jump into this here. Uh, we're going to talk about a little bit today why I'm doing this and uh, and sort of and just sort of a refresher. I know you've heard most of this before, but I want to set the stage of where this has gone. This is a major seed change in our business. And so as we zoom out a little bit, I want to really give you that opportunity to see this is why we're doing this. This is why it's relevant to you. And I hope you'll find something uh, of of your story in my story and our story and my company's story and what we're doing and why. Uh, then we're going to talk about the impacts that we promised and uh, and how they can looking at each one of those, these particular areas. And we're going to ultimately end up at 12 uh, is where we're going to land. And that's sort of been the theme of this whole thing is going through these 12 impacts over time. And then at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about roadmap. So I want to spend a lot of time on the impacts and, and explaining basically what they are and, and how they're going to apply and how they will be relevant to what you do, right? So a bit about me. You've heard most of this before. Hey, like the shirt, man. That's good. Though not one of my best pictures, right? Uh, okay. So 20 years, 20 plus years in, in business ownership. Uh, these weren't terribly big businesses, as small as five, as large as 200 people. Uh, the 200 was an adventure because that's a story for another day, but they were in multiple states and multiple situations. There were some very unique situations. I'm going to save for the one of the very last lives that we do. We talk about uh, some of the, the, at least in this particular subject matter, we talk about uh, an impact I'll get to. I'll let you know when that's coming. 
even though I'm teasing the heck out of it. But it's a it's a story I've told before, but I want to I want to reiterate it for those who have not uh, come across this yet. OK, so uh, six years of digital marketing, six plus years of digital marketing. I wished I knew some of the digital marketing things uh, then that I that I know now they would have helped some of these businesses. Uh, success and failure. That's important because not everything is, uh, you know, it, we always talk about success and we always want to talk about success because it's an ego defense. But you sure learn a whole lot more from failure, don't you? Uh, love of the business process. Skipped over that one. Uh, but it's very, very important and very, and factors a lot into what this is and what we're doing. Uh, and and so that's just and 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 the love of the good, you know, the, the love of what works instead of a love of what's new. You know, everybody goes after the new shiny objects in these businesses a lot, don't we? Uh, I've been guilty too. I mean, I, I love a good new toy and tool as much as anybody, but. A lot of what we're going to talk about over this next little while focuses on what works. It's uh, like Dave Ramsey says. He says, this is advi- This is not revolutionary advice. This is advice your God and your grandmother gave you. So you're not quite at that point. So maybe we switch to the grandfather, but still. <laughs> Although there are some others that ran uh, wonderful, successful businesses and invented a lot of cool things. I don't want to take that away from you ladies at all. All right. So. Uh, that's, that's about what we're doing there. So what, so what I'm doing, let me just reset a little bit. So I have decided this company has decided JKO works. We are zooming out. Uh, we have been focused on digital marketing and lots of different things about digital marketing. But as I've said in other lives, I kind of hit the wall and realized we had become a me too. We had become a like somebody uh, told me in a uh, in a meeting yesterday, it's our marketing is about R and D. It's rip off and duplicate. <laughs> I thought that was great. Uh, not my line, Derek. That's yours, buddy. Uh, but it's it it was very very cool and and unfortunately, sadly, very true. And I've certainly done my share as as have most of you, I suspect. Uh, so wanted to zoom out and wanted to look at the full impact of a business every aspect of a business, a 360 degree approach. And I know that's a lot of buzzwordy stuff, but it really is. You will see in a minute when we start getting into these impacts, it is more than just about getting more clients for somebody. If some other things are not in line, it doesn't really matter. So we use a tool. We have another, we have several tools to get you there, but ultimately what we want to talk about is around what we call the success blueprint. So the success blueprint is an assessment. We use some software, proprietary software, profit acceleration software that does 497 million calculations that would make my head hurt uh, and should make your head hurt too. But what they produce is, is nothing short of amazing. So we ask you questions about your business. We go into all different aspects. We go into these five key area impacts that we're talking about. We start with that and we'll, we'll drill down. We'll, we'll start with those in just a moment. But then we go, uh, we'll land at the 12 most important impacts out there that are based on those five. It's going to be a lot of numbers for a minute. So just play along. Uh, and the 12 are what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about. But if you really fleshed out all the sub impacts that these five key areas do, you get about 27 of those and you'll see the 27 in just a moment. And we'll spend just a second on them, Uh, but I really want to break down the 12. And if you're really ready for something deep and adventurous, we can actually go to 40 deep, deep impacts in your business. They are assessments that take a long time to do right. But once you've done them, I mean, there are the, the results that come out of this are beyond business changing. It's I've never seen anything like this. As I go through and look at all this, I see 20, 25 years even of business activity and business success and business learning and business knowledge and business wisdom coming full circle. Even if you don't have a business, if you have a nonprofit organization. And so what we our goal is is that I can find in any business 50, at least $50,000 of revenue in 50 minutes. Now, I hear you out there going, I will never see $50,000 in revenue in my lifetime. Uh, and that's unfortunate, but that's very common. So what I want to get you to do is 
think about going to $50,000, to getting to $50,000, doing what it takes to get to the $50,000 in revenue and beyond and going further. You talk about the million dollar business. Well, that's a, that's a thing for us. Well, $50,000 a month in revenue is $500,000, you know, a little over $500,000 a year, $625,000. So if you talk about uh, annual, you know, how that's, that is not as far off a goal as you might think. It sounds like a big number to some of you, I know, but I want to dedicate that these next times that we spend with each other to getting you to that point and beyond so that you have the success that you get into this business for, that you have the scalability and the business life change that you got into this for. I mean, we all got into this for reasons like that, let's face it. So now it's time to realize them. Now it's time to jump in there and, and, and really get serious about doing this. Instead of being a me too, find different ways to stand out with things that maybe are a me too, but do them differently. You know, do them better. Uh, focus on things that your customer, that your, that your competition is not. So to get your client's attention, right? So we will go through a lot of that over the next little while. So there, I hope there is going to be a lot of wisdom and knowledge dropped in the groups where you're watching this, at least from my standpoint, I will bring it. I will do my best to bring it. And I want you to be a part of that. And I want you to interact with it. And, and let's get some feedback on where these things need to go. Because there's a lot of, as pandemic and as uh, tech layoffs and as different global factors come and go, there's going to be people entering and leaving the digital marketing space. There just are. Uh, maybe it didn't work out like they thought. And maybe it's in, they see that opportunity to work from their home. So here they are. I mean, guilty. I've, I've looked at that too. I'd be lying to you if I didn't. And I'm sure you have as well. So but are you really doing it justice? Are you doing it right? Is there going to be a weed out process of these people who really aren't, aren't ready to play the game? If you're ready to play, this all is for you. So, all right, let's talk about these five impacts and let's spend really most of our time here. So there are five major impacts, uh, the foundations, and we'll talk about that. You thought you got away from that one with me. Uh, that's something that has been around for a long time and why uh, if in some of the Facebook groups, we did a Monday replay talking about the fundamentals of marketing. So more leads, more conversions, more transactions, and of course, more profits. So uh, what does all that look like? So we start with the foundations. The foundations are the fundamentals of not only of marketing, but of business. It's doing all the little things correctly. It is, it is setting up, setting process and just doing it over and over and over and over and over again. Think about McDonald's. I know you've been to a McDonald's at some place in the world. It is the same process over and over and over again. Uh, where they've gotten into trouble is when they've strayed from it being the same process over and over and over again. But it did that and it worked for a reason. All right. More leads. It's like more cowbell. Everybody wants more cowbell. Everybody wants more leads. And by the way, there's a really good beer called More Cowbell. And somebody has a sense of humor. So I don't know why that is, but that has like been my thing recently that I was talking about More Cowbell. And it always gets a laugh from people. But More Leads is one of those absolute fundamentals. But how are we doing that? How are we doing things that are different? How are we doing things that add to our business and add to positively to our reputation instead of being distant from everybody, not offering anything special, and just trying the same old tactics that really don't work, right? Uh, and, and the same goes for business. Once you get in there, it's the same old, stuck in the same old ways that don't work. Because number three here is more conversions. If you have something unique to offer, if you have a market dominating position, if somebody we would be an absolute idiot not to do business with you, uh, because of what you're offering, they would be a fool if they missed out. That is how you increase those conversions. That's how you get there. Uh, and, and you convert these people who don't know who you are into somebody who cannot live without you, into a business who cannot live without you, right? Okay, more transactions is just is, is your customers and your clients buying more often from you in many different ways. And that can take on a lot more forms than the obvious. 
that's the that's true of a lot of this. It takes on a lot more forms than the obvious. So I'm about to prove that to you in a second. But the final fifth impact area here is, of course, more profits. And not only people talk about revenue as what's being important, right? And I even mentioned it, you $50,000 in revenue. But what the dark side of that is, is if your cost that it takes you to produce what you have is just as high, you're eating into your profits, you're not doing yourself any favors. If you're discounting to the core to try to keep up with somebody in price, you're not doing yourself any favors either. So it's getting the profits up and specifically the net profit up. Um, and, and to where it needs to be when all your bills are paid for your particular product or service and all your overhead situations are met, the profit that's left is what's important, right? So those are the five core areas that we're going to, that are going to be the foundation of all of this, not just number one, the foundations, but the foundation in general, everything we're going to talk about from these points out comes from one of these five areas that can really impact the business. These are these profit areas, right? Okay, so if we really flesh that out, you end up with uh, 27 ways that really could impact your business. And I'll leave this up for just a second. We are not going to go into all of these. We're going to go into a lot of them, but we're not going into all of them. Uh, however, that said, we're going to talk about the 12 areas and we may take some side trips at some point, straying into some of these areas that are important. But you see, uh, if you read some of these, how they break down in each one of these five areas. So there are impacts here that if you implemented them would make a difference in your business. Which ones make a difference for everybody is actually a little different depending on what business you're in. But all of them will have some varying degree of impact on how your business functions, uh, how much money it makes, how many clients it serves, how it takes care of those clients, increases in, and doesn't decrease, um, and, and what kind of reputation you build for working with your clients. So the 27 of possibly of those here. Of those, we're going to focus on 12 uh, for the next little while. In fact, we've already started. Let's look at number one here, the market dominating position. There is already a video out there in the interwebs uh, under the Boost Live banner that talked about market dominating position. Uh, that was last time, in fact. So it depends on when you're watching this. But there is a video out there about market dominating position. This, and so what we're going to do, let's explain these, these 12 uh, in, in a little more detail. So the market dominating position, you may recall, it's a, you've heard of a unique selling proposition, right? A USP. We talk, we throw that around in marketing an awful lot. It is a USP or some benefit that your business offers, but the difference is in a market dominating position is it's got to hit a hot button issue that somebody has. If you offer something that's a major benefit or major value, but it doesn't serve anything and doesn't serve any purpose uh, you know, over and above what your market is looking for, you know, if you're not solving a problem out uh, actually a problem out there that they have right now, then it's not really a market dominating position. It's, it's a universal, it's a USP. It's, it's something that makes you good. It's something you're good at, it's something you do, but it doesn't take that extra step. It doesn't bridge that extra gap to be something truly special to where they would be an absolute idiot to not to do business with you because you are the only ones who are focusing on what is their problem right then and there. So that's a big deal with the market dominating position. It's in some respects a little harder to get the hang of until you do, until you really see it and really understand it. And then it is powerful. 75% uh, increase in revenue people have seen. And that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a, you know, more than you might think, you know, say you're getting, 30 clients, you know, or uh, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's do some math here. So let's say you're getting 20 clients, a hundred percent increase in revenues, getting up to 30 clients uh, a month. 75% is like 27. There's not a half a client out there. So we're round, actually let's round up 28. That'd be 28 clients. We'll just round up for the sake of argument, right? 
So, I mean, it's that's nothing to sneeze at at all. It's not a 10% increase. That's up to 22, you know, or 20, the, even a 20%. So it's, it's, it's a bigger increase than you might imagine. So, and, but it's entirely possible. It's not as huge as you think, but it can be, it can make a huge difference in your business all day long. But because you're doing and, and that will that reputation will continue to grow because you're serving somebody in a way that nobody else can. You're serving your customer base in with something they actually need. That's the difference uh, in, in a way that they uh, didn't, you know, that nobody else is. And so then that business is just following you home. It's, it's beating down your door. Please help me. You're doing this. Nobody else is. That's what you want. I mean, it's annoying, but that's what you want. That's how you have the success, right? So how are you doing that in your business? All right, beat that one to death, right? Number two, a little more simplistic, leads. Everybody wants more leads, like more cowbell. Everybody wants more leads. Uh, but we're going to try to offer you some different ways to keep that pipeline going. It's one thing to to do things, you know, it's the, it's the practice of lead generation, right? But are they the quality leads that you want? Are they the ones that you're actually looking for or are they just or are you just throwing numbers? I mean, if you're out there trolling Facebook or LinkedIn and, and you get, you know, you get thousands of people who see your thing, but most of them it doesn't apply to. It's not something they need. It's not something they want. Is it really that is it really that good a quality or are you better off? filling your pipeline with specifically the people who need what you have, who want what you have, who would be a fool to be without what you have because it actually applies to them and meets a problem that they have. So we'll talk about ways to get, that's uh, that's probably next time we'll talk about ways to get some more uh, leads out there and, and good quality leads that really match your profile and your avatar of what you're looking for. So there's some of these things are going to come back around, right? Number three, alliances and joint ventures. And this is a good one. Uh, I have done things in the past about horizontal and vertical marketing. But the growing importance of this, that's why we have the concept of the plug-in services. Uh, that's why, which we haven't forgotten about, by the way. We're going to be getting into some more of those. But that's the idea is who can you pull in that makes what you do better, that adds to what your business does? Uh, how can you have a connection with them where you both benefit, where you're providing things to them and meeting a need that, and, and a gap that they have? That's the, that's the heart of alliances and joint ventures. It's providing expertises to somebody else or products and services to somebody else that they need uh, and, and them doing the same for you in exchange. There are amazing benefits that come from that. And so we'll spend some time talking about that. All right. Number four, digital marketing. Just in case you thought we didn't, we, we, we had, you know, sort of left it behind here. I know we talked about zooming out, but in digital marketing, everybody's doing a website. Everybody's doing SEO. Everybody's a go high level expert, all that good stuff. Uh, but everybody has, many have forgotten the fundamentals. Everybody, you know, lots of people have forgotten the basic stuff. They don't. They don't coach it to their clients. They don't practice it themselves. They about referrals, reputation management, and doing doing everything smoothly, having a good you know system in place. There are people that are experts in Google Business Profile that they contend that just having a fully filled out and fully utilized Google Business Profile, a service that's free you know, can get you a world of, of, of connections because then people know who you are and it feeds into everything else that you do. So there are fundamentals. There's, there's basic things that are in place. Just responding to customers, having chat interactions with customers that are meaningful, having it in ways where when you're prospected, you're not just, you don't have to guess why they're contacting you. Uh, it'll be very specific reasons and uh, everything else you don't necessarily have to pay attention to unless it just stands out to you. So digital marketing pl still plays a role. Um, when So a lot of this is more business centric, but, but, you know, it's like you still need digital marketing. You still need, eventually you'll come to a point 
a little bit further down the road. We're kicking that can just a little bit further. Sorry, folks, but where, but you will still come to a point where you need ads. You will still come to a point where you need an, an impactful website uh, or a Facebook page or a you know some other version of presence there. And digital marketing is there to play that role. And, uh, and, and done well, done right, done consistently, done professionally, um, and, and done with a lot of feedback uh, can, can make a big difference in your business. Maybe not as much as some of the other things, believe it or not, but it does have a role. It, it's got a perfectly good role to play. And so we'll spend some time talking about that. Number five, a compelling offer. This seems obvious, but not so fast. Okay. This goes back to what we were talking about about your about your market dominating position up above. So it's one thing to have services that you offer somebody, but are they is it why should they take your offer over anybody else's? Why should they buy your stuff, your product, your service, your value are you showing them value? Are you showing them something that they can't get anywhere else? Is it that's where the you got to be a fool not to do business with somebody comes in. So a compelling offer is important and it's it's more than the sum of its parts. And when we get to that point, we will talk about that and we'll probably combine some of these together. But like I said, we'll go down some other side roads as well. All right. Number six, the drip campaign. Speaking of marketing, we're back to that very important thing to stay in front of somebody. Keep your message in front of somebody. I have a conf full confession, full disclosure. I don't do this as well as I should. I'm changing that. I'm working hard to change that because I'm applying all these to 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 our business as well. And and you know, and so it's it's one thing to preach it. It's another to say. You know, we talked about earlier about having success and failure. Can you have failure that you've learned from? So drip not having a drip campaign is an opportunity lost. Not having two or three of them, depending on what the situation for multiple situations is an opportunity loss. Keep your name in front of people. They may, for those who don't buy right now, that's may not be the end. It just means a not right now. Uh, you don't have something. We'll, we'll get into some other aspects that you don't have anything to offer them, right? Okay. You don't have this next one, a downsell. Do you have, if somebody says not right now, then what do you do? Is that the end? Is that, do you get the deer in the headlight look if they turn you down? Do you get bitter and ugly and, and wish they had? I mean, I have at times, uh, but it's it was my own stupid fault for not having a downsell, not having an escape valve, not having something to say, okay, I get that. I understand. I've been where you are. You know, it's, it's let's try this. And uh, scale you back some and still provide you tremendous value. I've got one of those. It's called the Success Academy. Uh, what I charge for it, it's a downsell. But the value it provides is beyond measure because it's going to meet some people. Be, you know, I talked about my offer earlier. My compelling, my compelling offer is I will find any business at least $50,000 in revenue in 50 minutes. And I hear the people out there going, my business has never seen $50,000 in revenue in it, ever. Okay. So my downsell in this particular case is the Success Academy for one basic low price uh, per month. And you get access to this thing and it takes a year to, to, to reveal all of it to you. Uh, but it's like a virtual MBA program. And for those of you who, who you know are thrust into dealing with financials and accounting and you haven't because you've been busy selling or you've been busy creating your product, we've got a special add-on for that. Teach you how to read a profit and loss statement. Teach you how to, to uh, you know, get some real value out of that, to, to actually leverage it, to, to make money on your profit and loss. And you say, what in the world is that about? Well, there's, there's some really cool tactics that go with it, completely legal. That, that teach you, that help you to make the most of that, having that statement, let alone the information it provides, you know, for your business on an ongoing basis. So you can see exactly where you are. We were talking about, you know, what is your revenue versus what are your profits? 
versus what are your actual profits? Once all your expenses are met, how much money are you really taking home? How much money are your employees really taking home and your business really taking home? How, how much is that benefiting from it? You know, so there there's a profit and loss statement is a powerful thing for that. If you're in, also if you're in the United States, there are some cool tax implications that I was not aware of uh, because I'm not a CFO type. You know, I'm not a financial person. I should do better at it. So this is to me, too. So those things are really, really important and and they'll make a bigger impact on you than you think. But this is the downsell. This is the escape valve that I have. Uh, it's not the success blueprint. The success blueprint is not for everybody. They're not there yet. But the academy certainly is. And and it's it's for anybody, any business that's they're ready to do this. They're really ready to learn. They're really ready to maximize. And guess what? Talks about many of the same things. And so that's how we get you to the $50,000 and beyond is follow is working through that system, working through those trainings, working through something that is that will will leave a mark on your business and you'll have forever access to as you know, as long as you continue to continue to need it. And then when you're done, it serves its course. But uh, in the meantime, we uh, we will give you extra opportunities to when you're ready to actually go through the success blueprinting process and realize some truly amazing revenue out of your business that you didn't know was there. I mean, supercharge it. So enough of that. Yes, I told you this is a little self-promoting, but I, I'm excited about this. I hope you can tell. I hope it's coming across because to me, this is just game changing. All of this is revolutionary. But the thing is, it's not. It's been around a long time and we've all forgotten about it, right? Okay, so let's talk about this one. Additional products and services. This is sort of goes back to the alliances up above and the cross sell. What other things can you offer people? Uh, so there is another one we will get to. And I'm not going to do the spoiler alert, although it would be fairly obvious. It'll be very obvious when you get there. So these are things that are not related. These are products that, and services that are not related to each other, that there are not cross sells and upsells. I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, that's coming later. But so these are these are things that are that are different, but they build out your entire portfolio. They would be like um, it'd be like a website and ads. OK, for your marketers. Can you do they fit together? Yeah, they can sort of fit together, but not really. You can have one without the other. They both have their place. They're both a bit different. So maybe you're an agency that offers websites, website design, but you also offer, you know, ad administration as well to get to maybe to get to that website. That's as close as a connection as you get. But generally ads are much more focused on that than, than that. They're offering something specific. They're getting you to a certain point or to take a certain action. That's not a website necessarily. Um, a website is a much larger informational piece. I'm not talking about funnels. I'm talking about a website. Uh, it is a much larger informational piece. A funnel is, uh, you know, it's, it's a website, but it's a horse of a different color there a little bit. So additional products and services, um, how do they fit? How does this all work together, right? So uh, the, what, what, other, what other services do you offer that make you more full service? Whether you're pulling those from some other company that's providing an alliance or a joint venture that's providing things for, those services for you, or you're somehow doing them yourself uh, that makes you, makes you more well-rounded situation, right? Okay, we are up to number nine. And... Uh, this is a scary one for people, but I'm here to tell you it is not as bad as you think. And that is increasing prices, increase your prices. You will be stunned how much you can make with a very modest, very small price increase. What a difference that makes to you. You will also be stunned if you try to go the other way. Um, it's a very logical assumption if you don't have anything else to compete against, uh, compete on, that you start discounting your prices and you start playing that game, right? So you will be like, 
the Burger King restaurant in, in Oklahoma City where my parents went to college. They had a thing, uh, buy one, get two free. Uh, my father was just telling this story. Uh, when So when they were in college, he they had all these coupons and they had no expiration date on them whatsoever. And so the basketball team got the big jocks in the big eaters got a hold of all this. They didn't really even have a football team at the college they went to. But if they did, they would have been just absolutely screwed. So basketball was bad enough. So I got a hold of all those and that became instant lunch and dinner and whenever you needed it because you'd buy one and get one free or buy one and get two free. So he could take uh, my mother because they were dating uh, to to the Burger King and they'd have burgers all the time. And so finally, at the end of four years of college, he took he had coupon things left. He found every single one of them and he took them the remaining ones back into the Burger King and said, here, you need these more than I do. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you better have these back and keep you in business. So, I mean, that is the example of, a, you know, how maybe how a price increase can help you or maybe not. But it's it, it if you start discounting your prices, you take away from your margin, you take away from your profits, you take away from and, and it hurts you in ways you don't really expect because there, there are ways you can't recover. People will let you discount your prices all you want and not show you the benefit and not show you the loyalty, not show you anything. But if you increase your prices modestly, but provide a tremendous amount of value, that's the difference right there. They got to provide that tremendous amount of value. But if you do that, you will be amazed how much you can you can gently increase your prices and people will stay with you. And the ones that don't, that go away, were price hounds and your biggest pain in the butt to begin with. So you good riddance. You probably don't want them. But your core people who see the value you provide and see what you provide will stay with you. So I'm spending more time on that. And we'll go back and revisit that when it's time. But increasing prices is not as scary or intimidating or as much of a bad move as you might think. It's uh, you will be stunned what a difference that makes. OK. All right. Moving on. Here is the upsells and the cross sells. This is the horizontal and vertical marketing. Right. So the well, sort of the upsells, of course, is is selling to your next level up. So so in my world, the success blueprint is a you know, is a, is a great tool. It's not really a sales. I, I'll provide it for free, but I'm very selective about who we're going to provide it to because it's not for every business. Not every business is there yet. Uh, but it's it, that process and, and, and the coaching that comes after it as a result uh, is, is an upsell from the Success Academy. And then there is a Success Blueprint Premium version that is a deep dive we'll talk about in just a second, but it really goes in deep. It takes a long time to make it to, to, to go through it and make it happen because it's very in depth and it, and it will truly revolutionize your business in, in ways you hadn't thought of, but that's for people who, and, and companies who really have decided what we're doing is not working, or we really want to optimize this to the absolute best it can be. Uh, and then we can we can go forward from there. But that's an upsell. Cross sell is is you know pivoting to something that's similar. You know that's website to SEO. Okay, they 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 have they have their same places. So uh, it's it's you know SEO to a lot of things as a as an extra sell. That's a cross sell. You know you can move somebody over to something additional that's similar, but it's in complementary to what they're doing. And that's of course different than the down sell. And it's and it's uh and and it's different from the additional products and services above. So we talked about that a minute ago. Those are t totally different, uh, uh, you know, things. The additional products and services are different offerings. Don't really have any connection or to do with each other, other than they're under your umbrella. Um, but the upsell and the cross sells are very similar. And they are good, and they are what's going on. So, okay, we're getting close to the end here. Number eleven is bundling bundling great way to do this so it's taking multiple services putting them together and and adding a little extra value go high level does this all the time 
This is at its core what it does. Replaces 60 something pieces of software or more. I, I don't know what that number is up to. It's insane now. Uh, but, and there are many other services like it that combine a lot of things together and add a little extra value for a, what looks like a, and probably is a little bit of a, you know, a special price that if you price these out separately, you would not get the value out of it if you tried to price them individually. But as a bundle together, they're, they're complementary. They're adding lots of value and they're, and, and, and there's little extras you can throw in that don't cost you anything as a part of it. And you, you know, customers can't help but buy them because it's such a cool, it's such a big value, right? Okay, this is a coaching thing after all, uh, a coaching service. And there's another C word that's 20 years ago related to this that we won't go to, but the similarities are there. So we, we call it coaching for a reason. And I say all that to say this. Number 12 is cost cutting. Again, this is like a price increase. There are smart ways to do there. There are typical ways to do this that coaches have done or people go into and or panicking businesses start cut. You know, you think about cutting costs. That means you think that means cutting jobs. You think that means cutting a lot of things that didn't. Frankly, what it ends up meaning is cutting off your nose to spite your face, <laughs> as the saying goes. So, I mean, it's, it's, there are smart ways to cut costs. There are smart ways to, to negotiate good pricing from your vendors, from your suppliers, from the people that help you, from your alliances, uh, to, to, there are smart ways to do this and in a good savvy, I mean, I've been a purchaser and I wasn't anywhere near as good at it as some of the people I came across. They're a, per, a good purchasing person is absolutely worth their whatever you will are willing to pay them, and then some, because they will find value in ways that you just can't, because that's not your focus. If you're not a purchasing person, do yourself a monster favor and hire that done. Uh, you know, pay and incentivize somebody to do to, who does it well to do it well for you. Because you will be blown away at what a difference that makes. Getting your cost of goods sold, the cost, that's the cost it takes to produce what you have. Now, with us as marketers in the service industry, that's that cost isn't very much. I get that. But you may have overhead. You may have employee salaries. You may have some other things. And there may be some, some smart ways of dealing with that instead of what's happening You know, at the time of this recording is just laying off people. Um, there are ways to work smarter, not harder uh, on, on these particular things. And so cost cutting is not the boogeyman that it's supposed that it's that it has been made out to be if but there are wrong ways to do it. And so we will spend a lot of time with some really cool stories about how to do that well instead of instead of making it into an absolute nightmare for yourself, your business and your employees. And your clients, frankly, uh, because if you're if you cut too far and skimp on too many things, it will show up in your product and service in a way that's not good and not healthy. So those are the 12 minimal things that we will be talking about. We'll be diving into many of the we'll be combining a few of these together. We'll be bundling and adding extra value. Right. So I did that. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll be adding in some other pieces back from the 27. Um, that will be impactful for you. We'll start talking about, you know, your policies and procedures. We'll start talking about uh, business process stuff. We'll talk about a lot more things. Uh, we'll bring in some subject matter experts to, to help with things like branding. I know I keep promising that. I'm trying to get them. They're busy people. Uh, but they, you know, we'll, we'll talk a lot about those things and, and what a tremendous difference that that makes. I, I, I may have an alternative to bring in for the branding thing because I kind of got uh, unofficially, what I thought was a networking deal sort of got, I don't want to say taken the task because that's not right. It was very much out of a position of, of being helpful, but it was more advice than I expected. Uh, but it was all under the under the auspices of branding. And you know what? He was right. He was absolutely right. 
And so there are there are several roads we can go down because what we want to do is make this your absolute best business in 2024. We want to trip, show you how to triple that revenue. We want to show you how to have more success than you have had in a very long time, if at all. So I, I truly believe in my heart of hearts that this is going to be an amazing 2024 is going to be a year we look back on and go, this is where, where it all changed for many of us. So these are the ways to get that done. So uh, these are the 12 that we're going to start with, but we're going to take some deeper dives. And speaking of deeper dives, let's talk about the, the I haven't really sub- done the label for this yet, but it's the Success Blueprint Premium. It's a deep dive. It kind of takes a day and a half to two days solid to do correctly. It dives into, we saw 27 different areas there. Imagine going into 40, any number of 40. And lots of how this works is we ask you lots of questions and we and we get answers out of them. We particularly ask a lot of questions in this particular because what we get, what we provide out of it is is very in-depth, you know, very down to the core. There's There's lots of things going on here. And so oftentimes we only, uh, what we'll do with this tool is if you become one of our coaching clients as a part of the success blueprint, and then what we call profit works implementation, then we'll go into those, those three or four areas. See, we, whenever we do the success blueprint, instead of doing all 12 of these sections here, we only have about time for three or four, uh, from the start. And so we, we start with that blueprint building that well, then we later cover, start to cover more of these 12 as the relationship builds. We also go into these, into three or four, those three or four areas here and, and dive even deeper and get more detail and come up with some really cool, amazing stuff. Um, and so that's that's a part of the deep dive portion of this, the Success Blueprint Premium. There's a premium charge for it too. This is an upsell. This is probably the most upsell we got at this particular point in time um we'll bring in uh as well through alliances and joint ventures i'm telling you this is all coming together um people to do website that do websites we'll go get the but we have already have uh people that do some of the best quality websites out there for you uh at reasonable prices but they're they're very very good people um and and we believe in if you're providing quality you know, and you're providing things that they can't get anywhere else, then then we'll use you even though you're a higher price and we'll get our customers to use you even though you're a higher price because the value is there. Uh, that's really where you need to adjust your mindset to. OK, I know this is a lot of information. So let's talk about the roadmap. Let's talk about this is what we take our customers through, right? So we start with a success academy and then we get them to uh, when then when they're ready, then we're going to get them to a point where through any number of ways that we do the success blueprint, we do the evaluation on their business. We only have time for about, you know, three or four of those 12 impact areas, Uh, but that still provides a, a tremendous ton of value. You know, that's at least $50,000 in revenue. It's actually more like 100000 guys. Um, I've been floored at what I can come up with and what this, doing all these things. And then we and then we give you the entire step-by-step roadmap to get there. We give you a report at the end. We give you a, we give you, it, it's, a, it's a Gantt chart. It's a timeline. We set your priorities based on the three or four things that we pick and we assign times to those. But then at the end, there's a master Gantt chart that has everything broken out. And when you click on a week, it has process steps for you to do. Next week, different steps. You you complete those, you come back in. It's not designed to overwhelm you. It's designed to take, and we're there with you the entire way for sounding board, for different ideas, for, um, for accountability. Huge things in accountability. How many people out there have had an accountability partner in anything? Um, it's a tremendous asset. If you don't have an accountability partner, a true one, um, take your time, do it right, and go seek one out. Uh, You will be amazed at what a difference personally that makes for you. 
Uh, they, you know, you have a right and you should spend a lot of time vetting them and they should be, you know, kind of similar running the race, similar, you know, right alongside you at the same pace you are, as they say, but make that get an accountability partner, whether you're, you know, it doesn't have to be your spouse, maybe better that it's not your spouse, but somebody who can relate to you for who you are and vice versa. You have to provide that for them too. So that's important to get stuff like that. So we we seek to be your accountability partner through these processes and we'll continue to add value, whether that's bringing in, uh, you know, other uh, more marketing centric things as we go along or deeper dives or different ways of adding value for you. It is a it is a long term relationship. It is a relationship full of value and full of continuous singing for our supper, as they say. I want to be able to do that. I want to show you results and have you be appreciative of those results that we show you because it's they're they're yours. Uh, And and, you know, they're yours are going to be different from somebody else's. And I bring all this up because this is the mindset I want you thinking about for your business. This is to what you provide your clients. Are you providing them something even if you just do one thing? Are you doing it in a way? Are you providing something that's very different in ways that nobody else is? Are you, do you have a set process and procedure to go through that? Do you have something that, you know, adds such tremendous value to them uh, without that? And it doesn't break you financially to provide it. It's just, it's a little extra. And, but it's the reaction that your customers have is, is nothing short of, you know, impressive. Not only are they impressed with you because they see the value in what's there, but the actual results you're getting, the actual thing you produce or build or sell or, you know, uh, a walk with them step by step in doing. Is it providing that kind of value for you? So that's the reason. Yes, this is a bit self-serving. This is explaining what I'm doing. But I want you to get to this level. I want you for your clients to provide these level of things. I've referenced you know, several businesses. I will continue to reference more. Uh, I'll continue to find some more. So it's not the same stories. But And if you have one, send it my way uh, that, that matches some of these things that provide this amazing value and the results that came with it. Um, you know, let's, there, there are some real stories, some real testimonials out here as to, uh, as to what these businesses that are doing that are different and where they have absolutely exploded in growth and success. And not only with growth and success, but many of them who don't get so wrapped up in the, their own selves find ways to contribute to their communities and to the, to the people that they serve and the places they are and to, to, to make a difference than that's more than just throwing money at a charity or something. They do these things because they believe in them and the impacts that come out of that are, are nothing short of impressive. That's a part of this too, you know, nothing short of their wonderful stories. They're, they're, they're awesome stories and they're a testament to, you know, you keep step writing you you find then then the good things will happen. So that's the reason I want to bring this all this roadmap up to you. That's the reason I wanted to go through this entire process and to take a step back for just a second. We'll get back to those to those 12 things next week. We'll be in and next time we come together. I've already started, but we're going to get back into it. But I really felt it was important to take some time and to to get the 30,000 foot view and say this is why we're doing what we're doing. These are the different things. This is what I want you to take out of it. And uh, and what I want you to contribute to it. There's going to be a lot more along the way. So let's talk about your, your roadmap here for uh, for the group upcoming here. So it's uh, we're going to review each one of these 12 things we've talked about. And then some. We're going to take some side trips uh, and into, into areas of a business that I think are important that these 12 don't cover. Uh, we're good. The plug-in services are still here. We've not forgotten about them. Uh, they're going to just going to be more of them. It's with getting everything else ready. It's been kind of difficult to, to get out there what I wanted, but you'll start to see more of those. And these are the different, they're sort of alliances. They're sort of bundling. They're sort of a lot of things, uh, whether I provide them or, and my companies provide them or, 
friends of the show provide them or companies that are doing great work uh, that we hadn't heard of until recently provide them. They're all there. And they're all, uh, and, and so the plug-in services are a vital part of what makes this happen because it makes you bigger than the sum of your parts. It makes your company and your organization uh, bigger than the sum of your parts. Even if you're a nonprofit, if you connect up with somebody uh, who who offers something in your chain of helping people, of, of meeting your, you know, the, the goals of not only your contributors, but the people you're trying to help. Uh, and there's somebody that can come alongside and provide even extra value. That's worth it. That's worth it to this. And so that's a part of a plug-in service too. So this is all going to be something that I hope is, is a continuous source of value for you for a very, very long time. Uh, we're not going anywhere. This is where our heart is. This is what we're doing. Uh, there'll be more. You know, We'll bring in more people uh, to, to help share in this. But this is something that not every digital marketer is out there doing because it's hard. It's more involved. It's I've been reminded of things in business that I that I have forgotten or hadn't experienced at the time. But that journey has been influenced by some major books and stories and different things all along the way. And you get to be the recipient of that. So I hope it provides, it's a major source of value. I hope you will share this with other people and, uh, and, and bring, them, bring them into it. Uh, we're going to be making a few changes to that end, but I, I want you to, to feel free to share this with people. And if you have any questions, drop me a line. Um, either you can do info at jklworks.com or comment wherever you're, you're watching this. So if you're ready, you know, let's uh, let's let's get this going. The journey begins uh, and and we're all going to get success out of this. We're all going to have life changing years. Uh, it, and I'm talking about beyond just this year, going to be life changing years, life changing opportunities for everybody. And uh, and that makes a big difference to all of us, doesn't it? So I hope this has been beneficial for you, even though it's a it's a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a stop down to see kind of where this is. And uh, and I hope you, you know, you got some stuff out of that. So uh, comment in there if you have any questions, any thoughts, anything that we missed in terms of business impacts uh, or any that you'd like to see fleshed out a little bit more. Uh, we'll spend some time to do that. That's where some of the, you know, I listen to podcasters and radio people all the time that say, hey, their greatest, their greatest show prep comes from listeners. So and viewers like you. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and being a part of it. Uh, we will be uh, we'll be back next time, and we're going to be talking about uh, more of those twelve impacts. And I hope to see you then. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.